Today we're covering signs and lights and everything about them. Now we're going to start off with signs as they're great for accent lighting effects and so much more and then we're going to be covering things like up lighting before talking a little about this craziness. Now signs are unlocked in the awesome shop, the same with the lights, and are one of the best ways to bring extra details to your factory. Of course, they can be used as general signage, something that you'll often see in people's storage areas. However, we're all about using them for trimming and cutting into items like you can see here. However, before we talk about that, we need to know the snapping points. So signs will always try to place themselves horizontally, however, if you place them on top of a horizontally placed beam, they will cross over the beam rather than snap along the beam. So if you do want to place a sign to run along the top of a beam, you either have to place a small beam in the opposite direction and then snap the sign across that beam, followed by snapping extra signs to the sign that you placed, or another easier method, which you might not realize is that if you turn the beam, if you rotate it by one increment, you'll notice that the signs now snap along the beam. Now, if you then rotate the beam a whole 90 degrees instead of just one increment, we can run the, the signs along the top. Unfortunately, though, we're still left snapping the signs individually along the whole of the beam for the time being, at least. Let's just hope in the future that we can zoop the signs. That would be a huge quality of life um, upgrade in my in my mind. But thank you, Lucky Blessings, because we can actually copy and paste signs to other signs. So just Control C and then Control V to paste. We then have this marvelous iris, which meant that we had to rotate the signs vertically, which I know a lot of people struggle with. Well, to do this, we need to place a pillar horizontally so that its base is free to snap the sign to. And from here, we can actually rotate the sign. It will spin around either clockwise or anti-clockwise, like a clock. And once you have the position, you will need to then snap more signs to the signs. And that's how we've done this. The next thing that we're going to be looking at is uh, for sign usage is trimming. So, or what we often call accent lighting. Now, I like to color the sign in one base color, then turn the emission up to two. This gives off a great glow, which you'll see me use often in my factories. It's almost like a, a cyberpunk-esque kind of neon uh, feeling that you get with it. Now, you can also use signs as parts of walls to give your factory a high-tech kind of feel to them. I definitely feel this is very matrixy. I like using the moving backgrounds for these, as you can see. However, to place them into a wall, the first thing you need to do is place the wall and line the sign alongside the wall. From here, snap the signs to other signs so that they're all in line. Because if they're not in line with one another, they can have weirdly different starting and finishing positions for moving um, signage backgrounds. Now, if you want your signs to reflect, which give this lovely little uh, effect here, then make sure that you select glossy rather than matte if you just prefer them to, to show the exact color of the, the actual sign, then select matte. Some signs can also be clipped into others. This doesn't work for all though, so it does come down to experimentation. But you can always run a beam alongside the sign to create a snapping point that cuts through the other sign. This is a cool technique that can really add a bit of detail to any of your signs. And a note on patterns. Patterns travel in one direction. However, using the pillars to flip the signs, we can change the direction of the signs should we wish. Now, when using gradients on a background, you can actually create a sign that flows through many signs um, by making sure to always start with the color that you ended up with in the previous gra gradient on the sign. Next, we're going to have a look at lights. Now, make sure you like the video if you're finding it helpful and stay to the end if you want me to explain this. There are five important tips for lights. 
Firstly, we only have four types of lights available. However, with the use of clipping, you can make more interesting light designs, whether that's creating spotlights on ramps or building cool wall lights. Make sure to play around with the styles. You can also color lights by connecting them to a light control panel. You can also change the brightness, but I highly recommend using two contrasting colors of lights to really make your factory pop. Now, sometimes you may want light without the light showing. Perhaps you want to replace the light with a sign to give off the feeling that it's lit up the room. Well, you can actually do this by covering up the ceiling where the light is with a walkway. And to be specific, it's the T crossing walkways, as this still allows light to pass through, unlike beams and foundations. So this definitely gives you much more freedom to play around with the decorational aspect of signs and something worth giving a go. Now, personally, when I'm walking around, I love seeing how historic buildings are lit up at night from the floor upwards. And we can actually do this in game by placing a wall mounted floodlight on a diagonal wall. The smaller the incline, the more range the wall mounted floodlight has for looking up vertically. And finally, we can focus the light beams using, well, beams. Yes, beams will block part of the light out, providing it's off center to the actual light. Uh, a center placed beam on a light will actually block all light. So play around with that. I like creating boxes so that you can specifically see uh, what's going on in the factory below or changing the angle in which the light leaves like on the front of my factory here. Now you're probably wondering how this spectacular light show was done. Well, this was built by Popcac and done using the mod light control, which makes use of the ArtNet or DMX software, which is used in stage lighting. So if you know what you're doing and have the given software, you can actually recreate stage style designs or even runway lighting, which looks amazing. Now, if you want to see more cool lighting designs, then do make sure to join Popcac's stream. I'll put a link to his Twitch account in the description below. And if you want more factory design tips, check out my video on 20 plus decorational tips for update five, I'll place it here. Thanks goes to all of our supporters, most notably our solo Eclipse patrons, the Calamity, Cerebral Tag, James Irwin, Jerry2, Popcat, and Fireflesh, as well as our Lunas, Dixie, Chris, Lord of July, and Ben, and finally today's Blood Moon, Chick Norris. As always guys, ciao for now.